Our first problem today is to solve the following. We have 64 divided by negative 4 divided by negative 2. And remember, we have to follow order of operations. And we start with whatever's in our parentheses. So 64 divided by negative 4 is negative 16. Divided by negative 2, a negative over a negative is, remember, positive. And 16 divided by 2 is 8. And that's simply our answer. Our next one is to find the actual area of the rectangle shown in the scale drawing below. And the scale they provide is one inch for every three feet. So, if we, we can set up a proportion, which I think is the easiest. When we have four inches, we, have, we know one inch is three feet, so four inches is how many feet? Cross multiply, x equals 12. So this is really 12 feet. Our other side is eight inches, it's another proportion. One, foot for every, one inch for every three feet equals eight inches for how many feet? Another cross multiply. This time x gets us 24, so 8 inches is really 24 feet. However, when finding area, we have to multiply length times the width. So 12 times 24, we end up with 288, and this label is going to be squared feet, or feet squared. Our I can statement today is I can calculate percent error in real, real world situations. And percent error is how far off an estimate or an initial measurement or guess was. And so one really good example that we see a lot is with the weather. In the weather, in the morning you may wake up and the weather is going to be 15 degrees today. But it actually ends up getting up to 20 degrees. We can calculate how far the weather prediction was off by, what percentage the weather prediction was off by. And then we can see how close or how far off they were from the actual data, data that we collect. So in order to find percent error, we have two things we need to first solve for. We need to find our error, and once we find the error, we plug it into the percentage error equation. Starting with how to find error. Error is the absolute value of your estimate minus the actual or exact. And the absolute value ensures that it's always positive. Because we never want a negative percentage. So this is always a positive answer, and that's why we use absolute value, because it gets us always a positive answer. Because remember, the absolute value of a number is how far away from the origin it is. It's not whether it's positive or negative. And now for percentage error, what it is, is we take the error we found from above, remember it's always positive, and we divide it by the actual amount, or the exact amount, from the story problem. And then this will get you a decimal. This, this percentage error gives you a decimal. However, because we want percentage, remember we're going to take the decimal we get out, multiply it by 100, and end up with some percentage error. And that's how we find it. Our first story problem to try percentage error with is the following. In science, you had to measure how far your matchbox car went. You found that your car went 29.34 meters, meters. However, when measured exactly, it actually traveled 32.74 meters. What was the percent error in your measurement? And so looking at this problem, 29.34 is our estimate. 
and then 32.74 is our exact. And the thing to note here is we want to make sure both our labels are the same. Here they're both meters, so we can, we can subtract meters from meters. However, if the labels are unequal, you have to make them the same. Because let's say you guessed four apples and there was five, five oranges, you can't subtract apples and oranges. You have to make sure your labels are the same. And so to find our error, remember from before, it's the absolute value of the estimate of 29.34 minus the exact of 32.74. If you figure this out, you get the absolute value of negative 3.4. However, remember, absolute value is always a positive. It's always how far from the origin. So in this case, our error is simply 3.4 meters. Now, to find the percentage error, we take the error from above of 3.4 and we divide it by the actual or the exact of 32.74. When we solve, we end up with this equaling 0.1038. However, we're not done yet. Remember, this is only a decimal. In order to get a percent, we have to multiply by 100. So we take our decimal, 0 0.1038, multiply by 100, and we end up with 10.38%. And that is our percent error in our measurement. Our second story problem is that on the news last night, the weatherman said that today's temperature would be 19 degrees. However, today's high temperature was only 13 degrees. What was the percent error of his report? So, 19 is what he said. That is his estimate. And then down here, 13 was what it actually got to, which is the exact. So, when we are solving for error, remember, it's the absolute value of the estimate, or 19, minus the exact, which was 13. So, 19 minus 13, the absolute value of 6. And the absolute value is simply 6. Now, to find percent error, remember we take the error, which was 6, over the exact of 13. 6 divided by 13 is 0.4615. Yet don't forget, we're not done. This is only a decimal. So we take 0.4615 decimal, and we have to multiply by 100, and that will give us our percent of 46.15%. And that is our final answer. So his weather report was off by 46.15%. He was not very accurate that day. Our final story problem says that Alex expected to get a total of $55 for his birthday because he was planning on using the money for new headphones. However, he actually received $78. What was his percent error in his estimation? So if we read our problem, 55, that's what he expected or guessed, so that's his estimate. We continue reading, he actually received 78, which is the exact. So if we set up our error equation and find his error, we take the absolute value of the estimate of $55 minus the exact of $78. This equals the absolute value of negative 23. And absolute values give you positive, so it's simply 23 is his error. 
To find percent error, we take the error of 23 over the exact, which was 78. When we divide, we get 0.2949. To finish this off, we have to take the decimal we found, 0.2949. Ooh. Let's try that again. We take the per per decimal we found of 0.2949. Four, nine, and we multiply it by 100. And this results in 29.49% because we were asking what was his percent error. And so Alex's estimate of his birthday money was 29.49% off.